Hello there YouTube, my name is Derek, and today I'm going to be comparing two of my favorite keyboards, uh, one being the Kronos 2, uh, that they call it the Korg Kronos 2, and uh, also the Nord Stage 3, um, two very different keyboards, but very much uh, powerful in their own right. And so, just the goal of this uh, video is just to do the best I can to help somebody out there make a buying decision based off of what you need if you're looking for a workstation or a stage piano, whatever you're looking for, um, just to kind of help you make a buying decision. Um, I have gigged with uh, both of them, um, used both of them um, in live settings and in the studio. And so this is just gonna be a comparison video to kind of uh, help you along the way if you're not really sure uh, where to put your money. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's get started. All right, so I figured I would start us off by uh, taking a look at the back of the keyboard so we can see what kind of connectivity uh, each one of them has, what kind of connectivity options um, each one of them has. Um, and the this is the Kronos, if you couldn't tell by the black uh, by the black color. This is the back of the Kronos, the back the left hand side of the board. Um, and so you know you can see here you have your um, analog outputs, and first you have your you know, your left and right, this is what you would use for your main uh, outputs. But then you have uh, four other assignable outputs as well, offers a lot of uh, flexibility. You've got uh, two assignable um, pedals or foot switches uh, right here, and then you have your damper for your sustain pedal. It also has a uh, speed if um, in and out, um, which speed if just stands for um, Sony Philips digital um, interface. Um, not sure uh, who still uses um, SpeedIF, but the option is there. It, it is a cleaner signal than analog because you get less noise. Um, so it's just a digital signal and high fidelity um, that you can uh, receive um, audio files in, not files, but receive an audio signal or um, um, send an audio signal um, out as well. And then uh, over here, uh, we have our um, audio um, inputs. And so we have uh, two audio inputs where you can plug in things like a, like a microphone. So you can use a microphone for like a vocoder uh, option, or if you want to, you could actually record vocals right into the unit itself. So you could sing or record or uh, create samples using your voice, uh, you know, the sky's the limit, anything that you want to do. Uh, as far as a signal in with the microphone um, you can do or you can plug a guitar in use the effects on the unit uh, as well uh, with your with your guitar um, so it has uh, selectors for both of them uh, where you can um, change it from uh, mic to line so if you're using a microphone you want to have this uh, out for a mic if you have a just a line in from something uh, you can just use the press it in you get the line in and then it has a level uh, for both of them where you can um, um, change the level of your your input signal um, also has the uh, MIDI in uh, MIDI in and out and a through as well a through is used for daisy chaining um, so you can actually um, daisy chain multiple uh, multiple units together so um, let's uh, let's just move the camera here and um, see what else it has to uh, see what else it has to offer all right, so moving down the back of the keyboard here, uh, as you can see, we have our uh, A and B um, USB ports, and uh, those can be used for a variety of things. Uh, you can use these A ports for a multiplicity of things. So if you have like a controller uh, keyboard, another keyboard uh, that you want to attach to the Kronos, you can do it using that, uh, using those ports there. Um, and it, you know, it'll transmit uh, MIDI, so it just uh, gives you more keys, more versatility. Uh, you could also connect a, uh, an actual keyboard, like a uh, alphanumeric um, keyboard. So if you were, you know, needing to type up stuff like uh, song names or sound names or anything like that, uh, you could just connect a keyboard to it, uh, <laughs> plug it in, and, and type away. Um, not have to use the touchscreen that comes with it. Uh, you could connect an external hard drive. You can connect um, USB flash drives where you can like bring in samples and stuff like that that you want to bring in or um, save your files uh, to an external hard drive or an external uh, flash drive as well. So very versatile um, as far as the usage goes there. And uh, also then you have this US, uh, USB B port that doesn't just um, send over MIDI to a computer, but uh, also sends over audio as well. So if you don't have an audio interface, uh, this will work as an audio interface because as you could see before, it does have the balanced uh, audio inputs. 
So basically you could do something like connect a guitar uh, to your Kronos and then run your guitar through the effects in the Kronos, like an amp, sim an amp uh, simulator or any kind of gain or, or you know, uh, distortion or whatever you wanted to add uh, to your guitar and then uh, come right out of the Kronos into a computer so that your guitar is being recorded directly into your DAW. So um, lots of versatility uh, with these with these ports in the back and uh, it's part of uh, what makes the Kronos the workstation that it is. It's equipped, uh, equipped for the studio. So uh, they did a good job of giving you all the ports that you would need here um, for studio work and, uh, and live work. Uh, as well. And the, the last two things on the keyboard are really just the on off switch and the um, and the AC uh, plug in just so you can plug your keyboard in. I don't think that uh, is something that needs to really be shown. Um, so now I'll go ahead and grab my Nord and uh, and we'll take a look at the back of that. All right, so I got my uh, Nord Stage 3 set up here um, so we can take a look at the back and do some comparisons with this and the uh, Korg Kronos. Now, uh, I will say that I have the Nord Stage 3 compact version, so it's a 73 um, waterfall key bed, 73 key uh, waterfall um, key bed uh, with physical draw bars, so it's uh, for, like for dedicated organ players and stuff like that, it's going to give you more of that uh, feeling of actually playing on an actual uh, a Hammond organ uh, of some sort. So. Uh, anyway, so let's just go over the uh, what we have here. So I love this port, this first little port here, this eighth inch jack. It is the monitor in. I love it. I love it. I love it. And the reason why I love this jack is because I'm able to plug in my phone. I'm able to plug in an iPad, and basically I can listen to music and play along with it by just simply plugging in and hitting play on my phone or tablet and uh, comes right through the headphones or right through the main uh, out uh, out jacks or whatever. And, uh, and I can play, play right along. Um, that's nice um, and nice and convenient in a lot of cases when, when, I'm, when I'm practicing. Um, I do wish that the Korg Kronos had it. It doesn't. Um, so it doesn't have that and I wish, wish that it did, but it, it doesn't. Um, but, the, uh, but the thing is, is you can do it uh, on the Kronos as well. You would just need to come through one of the audio uh, input, uh, one of the audio input jacks and uh, you would need an adapter to go from an eighth inch to a quarter inch jack and plug it in. And then you gotta do a little bit of menu diving in order for you to, in order for you to hear it. Um, so it can be done, it's just more complicated, it requires an adapter. Here, you're already ready to go. You plug it in, it's good to go. So uh, that's a great, uh, great feature there. Now I did say, I must say, I did try to use this live once where I just had like a, an auxiliary uh, drum track. Um, click track to go along we had a, a drummer there at the at the uh, at the gig but um, I just had some additional I had an additional click track and tried to use this for a click track and it did not work because the input level on this is far lower the volume is far lower than the actual sounds on the board itself so basically what in what ended up happening was happening was the sounds in the board itself uh, actually drowned out the click track. Um, so what we would have had to have done, what I would have, what I needed to do was have the, uh, was to turn the master level down on the board to match the level of the monitor in, turn everything down, and then have the sound team at front of house actually turn up the keyboard period as a whole in the, uh, in the, in the front, at front of house and uh, also turn up the keyboard in the monitors as well so everybody could hear. Uh, but the only thing is we were actually doing two songs and so I didn't want to create a more complex scenario for the, for the sound team, especially because we only had 10 minutes. We got to the venue, uh, you set up, and then they do like a sound check and the sound check is about 10 minutes and rather than having all this complicated stuff, I didn't want to do it. So didn't work for that. Uh, maybe your board, maybe the output, maybe the input here on the monitor end actually works better. Uh, but on mine, uh, the the level doesn't match anywhere near the level of the keyboard uh, itself. So for practice, it's great. Um, using it for the backing tracks uh, wasn't something that uh, worked out for me. But still, practice, it's great. Plug it in, practice, you're good to go. Uh, next thing here is just a regular headphones jack. Uh, now, the I didn't talk about the headphone jack on the Kronos because the Kronos headphone jack is actually on the front of the keyboard. 
I actually prefer it on the front because it doesn't get in the way. Uh, whenever a headphone jack is on the back, uh, you have to kind of configure your cord some kind of way. Uh, you gotta configure the cord some kind of way so it doesn't get in your way while you're playing with your headphones and stuff on. Now, I've been doing it for years. Most keyboards uh, have it on the back, so it's not really a big deal uh, for me. Um, but now I've been a little bit spoiled by the Kronos because the Kronos is on the front. And so I got a little spoiled there, uh, definitely. But uh, there is just your standard headphone jack. And then you have uh, your channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four analog uh, outputs. So uh, I use the channel one and channel two as my mains there uh, for a left and right signal. And then you have uh, two more that you can use uh, for whatever you want to, however you want to use them. You can route uh, whatever you want um, to, those, to those channels. Now, um, the Kronos has um, a total of six um, outputs and this has a total of four so uh, for me four works uh, perfectly fine for everything that I do um, and probably works for a lot of people definitely uh, for, for for what they do um, but the Kronos does have more so uh, Kronos is able to handle a more complicated setup when it comes to routing um, routing signals out of the board uh, the Kronos can actually handle more so since this is a comparison video it's uh, just a data point, something to make note of. Now, I do have a gripe about these outputs here. Um, and the gripe is this. On the Korg Kronos, all of the outputs, the analog outputs, they are all balanced outputs, which, which means that they're all grounded. Uh, these outputs are unbalanced, which means they are not grounded. Um, so what does that mean? It means that if you run super long patch cables out of these outputs, there is a possibility of you getting like radio frequency interference and stuff like that running out of these outputs. Um, now, the reality is this. I've never had a problem uh, whenever I am plugging um, into uh, plugging my keyboard up. Uh, normally, my patch cables are going to be small. Uh, my, you know, my audio cables are going to be short. Uh, because I'm plugging right into a direct box that's right near the keyboard or I'm plugging um, um, directly into monitor, uh, you know, my uh, studio monitors or something which is right next to the keyboard. Never had an issue uh, whatsoever. But because this keyboard is designed for playing live, like that's what it's designed for. It's claim to fame is live. Can you use it in a studio? Absolutely you can. Um, but it is designed for people who are playing live. Um, now this keyboard costs $3,600 as of the date of this recording. This keyboard goes for $3,500. So $3,500 for this keyboard. If you were to buy it in the 88 weighted version, I believe the cost of the keyboard is $4,500. Why on a $4,500 keyboard, why do you have unbalanced out of uh, audio outs? That doesn't make any sense uh, to me. They should be balanced for that price. Because it is a keyboard that is designed for live, just like I was talking about this monitor in, and we had 10 minutes, you know, not 10 minutes, we had a, not 10 minutes to set up, but we had a 10 minute sound check, and then, hey, we're, we're ready to go. You just never know when you're playing live what kind of scenarios you're gonna run into, and you might run into a scenario where all of a sudden the patch cables need to be super long for some reason, or they gotta run the cables way onto the other side of the venue or, or something. You just never know if you're going to be in that situation, and when you spend forty-five hundred dollars or even thirty-six hundred dollars, or thirty-five hundred or whatever it is, thirty-six. When you spend thirty-six hundred dollars on this keyboard, you you don't want to have to worry about radio frequencies and interference and stuff coming in through your keyboard and it being noisy. Uh, that's not stuff that you want to have to worry about when you spend this kind of money for a flagship. This is not a bargain deal at $1,000 and you get, get great sounds and they gotta make some cutbacks. This is Nord's flagship keyboard. To me, it doesn't make sense to have unbalanced um, unbalanced uh, ports there. Yeah, for me, like I said, never been a problem, never ran into an issue, but I can see you going to a venue, playing live, and the venue not being grounded and radio frequencies and all kind of inter interference and stuff being all over the place and they have to run some long patch cables and now all of a sudden it's a problem that cannot be fixed. Um, for $3,600 to $4,500, I'd rather just not have to worry about it. So anyway, that's that. So we got less uh, less outputs here and, uh, and they're unbalanced. 
and so that's uh, that can be an issue. All right, so next uh, next uh, jack here that we have is just the input for your sustain pedal. Uh, you just plug in this regular sustain pedal, and you're off to the races. Now, I will say this: some of the some of the keyboard sounds, some of the piano sounds, not keyboard, some of the piano sounds in the Nord um, Stage Three, uh, they do have like the damper noise and whatnot, so you can hear the dampers lift. Uh, off of the strings and rest on the strings when you're playing. When you're so, if you're going to record something like a studio recording and you're going to play the piano or whatever, uh, you hear those extra nuances in your sound. But you only get those extra nuances if you have a Nord um, sustain pedal. It does not work with a regular Universal sustain pedal. You actually have to buy a Nord sustain pedal in order for that to work. Now the Kronos has the same thing where you can hear the dampers and stuff lift off the keys and whatnot on some of the piano patches and whatnot, uh, but you can use a regular universal sustain pedal and you will hear the dampers and it works. Uh, with Nord, you have to actually buy their pedal in order to do that. Now for some people, it's not gonna be a big deal. You're not recording in a studio, a piano solo where you need to hear those dampers and whatnot or whatever. Uh, so it doesn't matter for a lot of people, especially when you're playing live, eh, doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, hearing all the extra noise and stuff can kind of get in the way of your mix. Um, anyway, but the fact of the matter is is that you need if you do want that feature You have to buy something additional to go along with the Nord and it has to be Nord. It doesn't work with the regular uh, Sustain pedal again. That's one of those things you spend forty five hundred dollars for a keyboard And then you need to spend an addition some additional money in order to you know take advantage of what it can do uh, uh, When it comes to sustain this the sustain pedal uh, that could be a problem for some people. Um, then of course, now you have your uh, control pedal. That's just a regular control pedal. You can control various parameters in the keyboard. Then it has a dedicated organ swell pedal. You can connect the organ uh, pedal to it, or pedal rather, to control the swell of organ uh, without, um, and the cool thing about this is like if you have an organ layered in with a piano or electric piano or some other sound, when you swell with using this versus using like the control pedal, when you swell with the dedicated organ uh, pedal, it's not going to change the other sounds that you're playing at the same time. It's only going to change the organ. So that's kind of nice. Uh, next here, we got our regular MIDI in and MIDI outs. As you can see, there is no MIDI through here, so there will be no uh, daisy chaining. Um, a lot of people don't use the daisy chaining anyway. I haven't used a daisy chain kind of a setup where I needed a through uh, in my uh, with my MIDI um, setup. I haven't used that in maybe 15, 20 years. So, you know, for me, you know, it's not really a big deal. But it is one less thing on here than is on the Kronos. And so, depending on how complicated your setup is, your MIDI setup, whatever you're trying to do, um, you know, you might run into a little bit of a roadblock with this. I'm sure most people can definitely <laughs> uh, work around it, not a problem. But it's just one less thing that this uh, that this has. Uh, next is a, a dedicated rotor pedal um, input. Now the rotor pedal input just controls the rotor, uh, controls the Leslie, the speed of the Leslie uh, uh, speaker in the cabinet. You know, you, so you can control the control the not an actual Leslie speaker, but control the uh, control the effect of it um, just using a using your foot pedal there uh, rather than using the other controls on the keyboard. So that's great. And then I just come over here and you have your uh, your program up and down pedal. A dedicated program up and down pedal so that way you can change your programs going up and down um, in the uh, in the board without taking your hands off the keys um, so that's uh, something great that allows you once again great for live playing you're going to switch patches you don't want to take your hands off the keys you can switch patches without taking your hands off the keys by just uh, using a pedal and it does uh, it will sustain um, your you know it's the, your, the your sounds won't cut off when you're changing patches your sounds will will stay on, so you can get smooth transitions between patches um, by simply using this and not taking your hands off the keys. And uh, the last one, we'll just go over here, it's just the USB, uh, the B port. Uh, so that's just for connecting to your computer, and uh, you know it, it transfers MIDI, and what you can also do is, here's the cool thing about Nord. Uh, now, you can go online at Nord and download any of their sounds, and you can use a sound editor that comes with the Nord program, and you can load in whatever sounds you want to off of Nord's website, and all of the sounds are free. High quality, top-notch sounds for free. 
In other words, when they come out with a new piano sound, you can go onto Nord's website, download that piano sound, and put it on your keyboard using the USB port here, and you will be off to the races. So you know when you make an investment with Nord, you can buy a keyboard, and even when they come out with new sounds that sound better or different or different characters or whatever, you have access to all those sounds, and right now you have access to all of them for free. That is not something that you can get with Chord. You can download new operating systems for free, but if you want sounds, they will cost you uh, sometimes more than two, three hundred dollars to get additional uh, to get additional sounds on your keyboard. But with Nord, uh, you you can constantly just uh, change out the sounds whenever you want to. That is a great, great, great feature. What that means is you can have the same board for a long time and be playing new sounds. Uh, that's, that's that's you don't have to go out and buy a new keyboard because hey, my sounds are old now. You can use uh, the website, uh, download the sounds, and arrange them. And you can even uh, set up your keyboard where you can remove certain sounds. It's like you don't have to have any of the sounds in there are removable. You can take them out, put different ones in, and set it up the way you want it. So if you never play an upright piano and don't have a use for an upright piano, you can take the upright piano sound out of the board and put something else in there that you are going to use. If you never use electric pianos, and you take electric pianos out and a little more acoustic pianos, or you know whatever the case may be, you have that. Uh, flexibility but the great thing is is when they come out with new sounds all you have to do is is just upload them into your keyboard and you're you're off to the races uh, my only gripe here with this uh, port the USB port is it does not uh, export audio so it doesn't um, you're not going to send any audio signals out you can only send out MIDI I don't know why you can only send out MIDI and not audio. So in other words, it's not an audio interface like the Kronos. The Kronos is the audio interface and so it's gonna send out an audio signal. Basically, you don't need an audio, uh, you don't need an a, a interface, a separate interface in order to, uh, you know, you, um, in order to transmit audio to a computer or a DAW. Uh, with this keyboard though, you will need an external uh, audio interface in order to do that because it does not transmit it does not transmit audio okay you know some people say well it's not really a big deal I've got an audio interface you know no big deal I just plug it up that way uh, and I've got an audio interface as well and that's precisely uh, how I do it uh, my issue is is we're talking about a keyboard that is thirty six hundred dollars and 88 weighted key is forty five hundred dollars uh, why does it not transmit audio and and MIDI? Uh, why why can't it do it? Um, I have the Roland FA08, um, and the Roland FA08 is eighteen hundred dollars right now, seventeen ninety nine ninety nine as of this recording, and it transmits audio and MIDI. Uh, and this keyboard here is thirty six hundred dollars and doesn't do it. And its eighty eight weighted version doesn't do it. Um, and it costs $4,500 for the 88 weighted version and you can't use it like an audio interface so you have to have an additional device in order to make it work. To me, there's no reason to have that on your flagship. Again, if it was a bargain deal, you're getting it for a thousand bucks, if it was the little brother to another flagship in the Nord line, you deal with stuff like that. But when you're talking about a flagship, this is the kind of stuff you want to have on your flagship keyboard. And a lot of people might say, well, you don't really need it and so on and so forth. That's that's not the point. If you are in a situation or in a scenario where it would be better to have it, you want your keyboard to be able to handle anything you might need to do because you never know what kind of scenario you're going to be in. And that's why you buy a flagship keyboard so that you can have these, uh, have these other little things worked out where it's never an inconvenience. So, Anyway, uh, but overall, like I said, the monitor in is great. Uh, you do have four uh, out jacks or whatever, so you can use those however you want to. It's got the sustain pedal, of course, the control pedal, the organ uh, swell, the, the control, the rotary speed, uh, all that stuff. So uh, definitely, uh, it's definitely going to get the job done um, when, you, when you're gigging and play, playing out live. So, uh, so we've got that all taken care of. So now let's take a look at the... Uh, Take a look at the front of the keyboards and compare what they look like. Uh, what they look like. All right. So here is the Nord, uh, the the front of the front of the keyboard, um, so that you can see it. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of it online already. 
uh, I would like to say it is it's definitely well built uh, all the knobs and stuff feel uh, very solid I have the compact version with the uh, physical uh, draw bars uh, for um, organ playing but everything is um, on this keyboard is just uh, really solid um, really uh, well built I love the uh, end caps how they're um, made of wood here and uh, it just gives your keyboard kind of an upscale feel um, feels like you have you know um, a high-end product uh, with you know little details like that but not only does it add that uh, as far as making it feel upscale which somebody else might not agree with that because uh, that's a matter of taste uh, but having these uh, wooden end caps here definitely do uh, protect the board from you know bumping it up against edges and stuff like that uh, if you walk into a lot of pawn shops or whatever or or places where you know you're buying a used keyboard a lot of times it's right on the edges of the keyboards uh, that's where uh, that's where people um, experience some some damage and stuff like that from gigging and touring and whatnot. Uh, but having the wood out there uh, does uh, protect the board, so it serves a nice practical purpose. Um, anyway, I love it. Everything feels solid. All the knobs and stuff feel solid. Um, now, the concept behind Nord is to basically they try to put as much as they can in front of you. It is definitely a player's a player's keyboard. Uh, when you need to make tweaks and edits and stuff like that. You could do it right on the fly because everything is laid out in front of you. Um, if you want to adjust the EQ really quick, you just hit a button. You want to add compressor, you know, you just uh, hit a button, turn a knob. Um, it's very, very uh, simple to operate. You know, when I, you know, you first look at it, when I first looked at it, first got it, uh, it was like, wow, this is so daunting. There's so many different knobs and stuff like that. How will I ever navigate this? Uh, but the, the reality is it's laid out very, very well. Uh, you have your um, organ section where you can control your, like, your vibrato and your chorus and whatnot, where you can control your percussion and whatnot, and you have a separate uh, volume uh, control for the organ section uh, itself. You can set up your splits and whatnot. Um, you can control your um, drive here with just a knob, all of your rotary speaker functions. Everything is right here. And then you get to your piano section, and then you can uh, adjust the, you know, the piano and whatnot. Uh, the piano section. So when you have piano sounds and stuff, you can uh, turn on the string resonance, turn it off, whatnot. You can turn on pedal noise, turn it off, and whatnot. Um, you know, adjust the EQ um, down here. Uh, just a lot of different things that you can do. Just right here, very, very simple. A press of a button, you're off and running. And in the middle section, this is the part, this is the place where you like um, save your sounds and whatnot, put them in the order and stuff that you want to have them in. Uh, be able to push a button and, uh, and, just, uh, and just bring them up. Uh, almost like a uh, set list, like the Kronos. Uh, you can just hit a button and bring up those, bring up the sounds and stuff that you want. Um, and it's got its own, um, and, and it's got a uh, selector here, so you can select your different uh, sounds. So your piano has a uh, separate volume, and then you have your middle section, and then you have your synth section here, and it has its own separate volume as well. And you can go through your synth sounds and whatnot. And so all of these, anything that's not a piano, or it's not an organ or you know a clav or you know a clav clavinet or something like that uh, that's where those sounds reside so all of your pads all of your leads uh, anything like horns strings it's all in this it's all in this synth section here and uh, and it's got two displays that are OLED displays um, a high contrasting uh, display so you can really see it really simple to read um, they're not super big but they don't need to be because they're very very clear and the viewing angles are really, really good. So it doesn't even matter what viewing angle uh, you were at, you can see them. And then after that, then you have like your, you got an arpeggiator and stuff here. Uh, but then you've got like your effects section. So you can, you know, if you want to add a little bit of reverb and stuff, you just uh, hit a button, turn a knob. Want to add some delay, hit a button, turn a knob. Um, you know, whatever you're doing, um, you just, you really just turn a knob. And then it's got an external uh, function as well. So you can control some other things. Um, uh, via MIDI control an external device but anyway everything is right in front of you they try to limit the amount of digging in menus as much as they can so this this is a player's keyboard is it's made to be played played live uh, making fast tweaks and stuff like that that's where it shines because that's what it's designed 
That's what it's designed to do. If you start looking, if you start trying to look into some deeper uh, sound, um, sound editing and, and changing sound creation and stuff, that's not what this is going to do. Uh, you can do some stuff, you can make a lot of edits and do a lot of things and morph sounds and, and whatnot, but uh, it's really designed for a lot of live playing, everything's in front of you, and that's where it really shines. And uh, I have the one with the waterfall key, uh, key bed, uh, you know, for like organ playing, synth playing and stuff. I didn't need 88, um, an 88 weighted keyboard because I already have the Chronos and the Roland FA-08. So I just got the uh, compact uh, 73 key with the waterfall key bed. So uh, it doesn't have those rough edges uh, on the end so your hands don't get snagged uh, whenever you're doing those um, glisses and stuff like that. To so play organs is great. Uh, even uh, even just playing, um, even playing um, any kind of um, synth leads and stuff like that. One wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful feel to this keyboard. Um, great uh, modulation wheel, pitch bin, you know, the pitch bin made out of wood here. Just uh, just well built, a player's keyboard and uh, and really, really, um, and really shines. Uh, that's that's where you feel like um, they're kind of the, the cream of the crop uh, when it comes to that. Um, they, they, they did a really good job um, building that. So now let's, uh, Let's take a look here at the uh, at the Chronos. All right, so here is my uh, Chord Chronos uh, two, and uh, in 88 uh, 88 keys. Um, this is the front panel, so you can see what it looks like. And uh, as you can see, it is a completely different setup than the Nord Stage three. Um, less knobs and stuff like that. Big touchscreen and stuff in the middle, um, but it does have a lot of real time um, controllers where you can you know control different parameters and stuff with these knobs. These knobs are assignable. All of these sliders are assignable. These buttons and whatnot, they are assignable. Um, so you can, you know, you've definitely got a lot of uh, real-time control and stuff like that, but it does have a big touch screen and stuff in the middle. Uh, you are gonna get into a lot of menu diving and stuff with this, with this keyboard. Now, this keyboard is a completely different animal than the Nord Stage 3. The Nord Stage 3 is a very simple, um, very simple keyboard. Um, let me give you an example here. So this is the uh, this is the North Stage Three. This is the user manual for it. It's not a quick start guide or anything like that. This is the actual user uh, manual. Uh, this manual is 60 pages from front to back, including the index. 60 pages gets you up and running on the Nord um, Stage 3. It's very, very, very simple to use. You plug it in, you spend less time learning how to use the equipment and more time actually using it. Uh, you plug it in, you play it. Uh, if you want to adjust a parameter, you hit a button, you turn a knob. It's, it's literally that simple. You just have to learn which knobs to hit and where they are and you know stuff like that. But it's very, 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 very simple. Um, Again, so when you're playing live and you need to make a quick tweak to a sound, there's no menu diving. You just go in and you just tweak it really quickly and you are up and running and you are good to go. Um, very, very simple to use, 60 pages front to back. Now the manual for my Core Kronos, this is the manual for the Core Kronos. I actually keep it on my tablet. I keep it on my tablet uh, for a reason because the it, the manual is huge. It's uh, 1,174 pages. 1,174 versus 60. Uh, so this just does a lot more stuff um, because it is a workstation and not merely a stage piano. Can you use it and play live? Absolutely. Can you tweak something, sounds and stuff in real time? Absolutely. But if someone were to say, hey, can you just add a little compression to a specific sound? Uh, you're not going to be able to be able to do that in real time. You're going to have to do some menu diving and actually go into the board and actually do it. Can it do it? Yes. But it's not going to be able to do it as simple as you could do it on a on a on a stage three. But this just does way more. If you want to bring in Omnisphere sounds, um, you can bring in your sounds from Omnisphere and play them on here, um, or your samples from your DAW or whatever. Bring them in, upload them, play them here. You can't do that with the Nord Stage Three. It can't be done. Uh, it's got you know the ability for. Uh, to play your your backing tracks and all I mean just it it does this keyboard does everything um, it's just that's just the nature it's just the nature of the beast but it's uh, 
it's hard to use. Uh, there's is a, a significant learning curve. If you are coming from a Yamaha, and Yamaha is normally what you use, and you're used to the Yamaha world, uh, Korg world is different than Yamaha world. Um, if you're used to using Roland, Roland world is different than Korg world. So it's going to be an extensive learning curve, learning how to adjust the parameters and stuff like that. But once you uh, you start getting your 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 hands around this instrument. Uh, you start having a hard time finding stuff it can't do uh, in regards to you know music production. Now, of course, there's an argument to be made that a lot of the stuff that this does, uh, people use their computers to do now. Um, certainly, uh, we're in 2018. People use their computers to do a lot of the production work, a lot of the heavy lifting and whatnot. And so, I mean, like, who is really using a keyboard? Uh, to do a lot of those to do a lot of those things so there is definitely an argument to be made um, for that but if you want a keyboard that is able to do uh, a lot of production work uh, this is the keyboard to get um, I, I don't make any uh, bones about that this is I believe this is the keyboard to get uh, if you're if you if you want something that's going to be kind of an all-in-one uh, all-in-one workstation um, and you know, there's always the argument versus you know VSTs versus hardware and all that kind of stuff. And I, I really don't want to get into that debate. Uh, I will say this: uh, I am a musician first, and producer, and engineer, and all that stuff. That stuff comes later. That stuff comes second, third, fourth, whatever. But I am a musician first, and so I love to uh, play. So I like to have a hardware. I like to do as much when it comes to my creative process and actually playing. I like to do as much as I can on hardware um, and not using a computer and a mouse and a keyboard uh, because that kind of messes up my creativity. I mean, if I'm writing a song or something like that, it messes up my creativity uh, when I'm, you know, fooling with a mouse and a keyboard and stuff like that. Now, if, you know, if all of my playing is done and it's time to use a mouse and a keyboard and do, you know, I put on a production hat or whatever, then that that's something different. So. Anyway, the keyboards are two, definitely two different keyboards. Again, I think we do them a disservice when all we do is just compare the sounds. When you just turn the keyboard on, play a few acoustic pianos, play a few EPs, play a few organs, play a few synth sounds, and then declare one the winner over the other. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to compare these keyboards because they do more than that. Um, yes, you can make tweaks on the Nord Stage 3 and do it real time and do it fast. But if you want to get into deep sound design, deep tweaking, deep changes and whatnot, you're not going to get very deep in the Nord. But you can get very deep on this. So it's a matter of how deep do you want to get? How far, how far do you want to go? Um, so it very much depends on the user and what your needs are. And I will say this workstation is less than the Nord. Uh, stage three. So uh, this 88 uh, key here workstation, what it's 30, 3700 right now. So 3699 um, as of this recording. And the Nord Stage three in compact with 73 keys, that one was 3600. So um, 3700 versus 3600. This is a hundred dollars more, but it's a workstation and does a whole lot more stuff. And that's that if you buy the 88 weighted key version of this. Now, once again, you're up at that, you know, $4,400, uh, 4500 whatever it is, uh, you're up against that mark. So the, the Nord is more expensive than the Korg right now. So, you know, if price is a consideration, this is going to be less and it's going to do more, but it's going to be harder to use. And uh, if all you're doing is playing live and you don't have complex routing capabilities uh, and stuff like that, you know, or maybe, hey, you just don't like the sounds on the cord, then if you just don't like the sounds at all, then you, you're, you know, you're better off getting another, better off getting another keyboard. But anyway, that's it. They're completely different um, keyboards. And so they're set up completely different to do what they do uh, the best that they can. So anyway, that's it. Let's go ahead. And I know sounds are important. Sounds are really, really important. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the sounds of the boards here and do some sound comparing. All right, so let's do some sound comparisons now. Um, so I'll, what we're going to do first is we're going to do some acoustic pianos. Uh, we'll just uh, compare the two, and you can hear what they sound like. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play the chronos. I'm just going to play what's called the Berlin Grand. I'm going to play it as it comes out of the box. And then after that, I'm going to add some reverb to it, 
play a little more so you can hear it with the reverb uh, that is in the unit. One of the reverbs is called Overb is what it's called, what the effect is called. Just so you can kind of hear what some of the effects, uh, what the effect sounds like. And then we'll do the same thing with the Nord. We'll play, um, we'll play the, the uh, what is it, the Italian, yeah, the Royal, the Royal Grand 3D. It's the first uh, piano that shows up in the Nord. We'll play it. And uh, then we'll add a little bit of uh, reverb to it as well, so you can you can compare the two. Um, I will say this: when I'm playing the Nord, I will actually be playing the Kronos. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'll be physically playing this, but it's you know via a MIDI cable. It'll actually be playing this keyboard here. So I don't want you to get confused. It'll show it on the screen which one is actually playing, but just so that it's a fair comparison, because this is 88 weighted keys and it can be a lot more expressive than the semi-weighted keys, we're just going to do all the acoustic piano playing on the Kronos, uh, even when we're actually sampling the sounds or playing the sounds from the uh, from the Royal Grand, uh, from the uh, Royal Grand, from the um, from the Nord Stage Three. So uh, here we go.